The United States just created a weapon so advanced that it could destroy an entire country in just 30 seconds. This weapon is not just another expensive military arsenal, it is a marvel of modern warfare that combines advanced technology with unparalleled destructive power. This special missile, unlike the regular, can adjust its shape and direction while flying. This means it can hit even the most agile targets, like advanced fifth generation and future sixth generation fighter jets. Its capabilities have sparked the interest of several nations. And there are questions like, how does this missile work and how powerful is it? Join us as we unveil the United States' $90 billion missile that can destroy China in 30 seconds. The Air Force Research Laboratory has long been investigating rockets, and they just made a major breakthrough. Recently, after extensive effort, they introduced a groundbreaking technology that is derived from a modified Hellfire rocket. The Mutant features a front section capable of bending 45%, enabling rapid directional changes. However, this design faced challenges. The projectile needed to endure high temperatures and extreme stress at speeds exceeding 1,250 miles per hour. To address this, the Ministry of Defense developed a composite structure with an internal metal frame and elastomer. This innovation allows the mutant to maintain supersonic speeds while tolerating temperatures up to 1,600 degrees Fahrenheit. However, the U.S. Air Force sees mutant missile technology as a way to upgrade current and future combat aircraft, enabling them to handle increasingly agile threats, including those from the sixth generation stealth jet in the next generation air dominance program. The website of the AFRLs, the research laboratory responsible for this mind-blowing technology, mentioned that a missile with longer range, better maneuverability, and greater agility is usually more effective if it also stays lightweight. The missile's control actuation systems, or KAS, are key to these abilities, affecting how well the missile can reach its targets. Each KAS, or combination of CAS elements like dual canards and fins, greatly affects a missile's performance. CAS that improve range often reduce maneuverability and agility. Conversely, CAS that enhance maneuverability and agility usually decrease range due to drag or added weight. The Mutant Project aims to change how we view CAS impacts on missile performance. Unlike traditional missiles, Mutant's design only includes tail fins, reducing drag and improving efficiency for longer range. Typically, tail fin only designs sacrifice maneuverability and agility for range. However, the Mutant missile addresses this by adding a conformal section at the front that can bend away from the center axis. This feature allows the missile to keep its extended range while also improving maneuverability and agility, which are crucial in air-to-air -air combat. The Eurasian Times spoke with Kitch Liao, Assistant Director for the Atlantic Council's Global China Hub, to gain insight into the Mutant missile and Liao further explained that the rotating mechanism of the missile allows it to redirect its explosive fragmentation warhead, or potentially a continuous rod, during the final phase of its flight. This feature effectively increases the missile's engagement range. He also noted that the AFRL's claim is that the new design enables the missile to target more agile enemies without relying on traditional control surfaces. Instead, it expands the effective sphere around the target allowing the missile to engage and cause damage, even if it doesn't need to fly extremely close. When using a regular air-to-air -air missile, the entire missile has to change direction if the target moves away from where it was expected to be. With the Mutant missile, it can adjust its course by moving the front part to line up with the actual location of the target. The movable nose section of the Mutant can improve the accuracy of the missile's small warhead by focusing its impact on the intended target. It also helps keep the missile's seeker, or multiple seekers in advanced designs, locked onto the target. Missiles with multi-mode seekers, which combine imaging, infrared, and radar technologies, often have complex setups that can limit the sensor's effectiveness in certain combat situations. The AFRL acknowledges that previous morphing technology was too bulky and power-hungry for missile systems but the Mutant program is making progress in integrating these features into weapons. The Mutant website noted that AFRL developed an electronically controlled system using small electromagnetic motors, bearings, gears, and other components to fit into a missile. Careful design allows for creating a circular path for wiring to run through the missile's body. AFRL also noted that the Mutant's moving part is somewhat similar to the adjustable exhaust nozzle on the F-35B 
which is used for short takeoff and vertical landing. However, there are challenges related to materials. For the moving part of the mutant to work in air-to-air -air missiles, it must be strong enough to handle the extreme temperatures and stresses of high-speed flight. The missile's front section must also endure sudden changes in direction during flight. To meet these needs, AFRL is developing a composite frame with a metal core and elastomer filling. Liao mentioned that the idea of aiming the seeker in a different direction might not be very useful. If the seeker rotates to keep the target in view while the rest of the missile continues on its original path, it could increase drag and affect performance. He believes the benefits of this feature are not clear yet, and more testing is needed to determine if it's worth the cost. Liao also compared this to the 1990s trend of adding vector thrust to jets, which eventually was seen as not worth the added weight and complexity. He suspects that the mutant might be trying to solve a problem that doesn't really exist. The mutant website states that the final design should be suitable for missiles traveling at very high speeds, where parts might face temperatures above 900 degrees Celsius. AFRL has already tested various components in the lab and with rocket sleds. The prototype is based on a modified AGM-114 Hellfire missile. Another round of ground testing is planned to be completed by the end of 2024, with the Hellfire-based prototype expected to demonstrate dual articulation and fin control. The Air Force is interested in the mutant because enemy aircraft have become very good at dodging attacks. Normally, a missile launched from a jet can't change direction easily without slowing down. Small side engines can help turn the missile, but these methods are outdated. The mutant brings new technology. Imagine an enemy fighter on a mission seeing a missile coming straight at it. The pilot dodges, thinking they're safe, as the missile flies by. But then the missile quickly turns and catches up with the target. This would be a huge surprise for any enemy. The mutant isn't the only new missile the U.S. has. Lockheed Martin has been developing hypersonic weapons for a long time and has now introduced the HAWC, America's first hypersonic missile. The main feature of the HAWC is its incredibly high speed, reportedly able to reach Mach 10 or 7,500 miles per hour. This makes it faster than any other missile or aircraft, allowing it to hit any target and stay out of reach for interception. Additionally, it can fly and maneuver, adding to its impressive capabilities. If combined with the mutant's technology, it would create the most powerful missile in the world. The first successful flight of the HAWC took place in September 2021. Additional tests were conducted in mid-March 2022, but were kept secret to avoid increasing tensions with Russia during the invasion of Ukraine. The details of these tests were disclosed in early April 2022. Mike White, Principal Director for Hypersonics, mentioned that the HAWC is smaller than other hypersonic glide vehicles, allowing it to be launched from more types of platforms. He also pointed out that the HAWC can easily integrate various seekers. DARPA asked for $60 million in 2023 for MO HAWC, a follow-up program to HAWC. On July 18, 2022, DARPA announced the successful third flight test of the HAWC. The missile flew at speeds of 3,300 miles per hour and at altitudes above 60,000 feet, covering over 300 nautical miles. The final successful flight test of the HAWC was reported on January 30, 2023 by DARPA and Lockheed Martin. This test showed similar performance to previous ones, but with improved capabilities. DARPA plans to build on these advancements with the more opportunities with HAWC program. The technology from the HAWC project influenced the design of the Hypersonic Attack Cruise Missile, a U.S. Air Force program aimed at creating a scramjet-powered hypersonic missile. Raytheon received the contract to develop HACM further in September 2022, and it will use a scramjet developed by Northrop Grumman. How did they achieve these results? This technological marvel is unlike the regular missiles controlled by the Articulation Control Actuation System. The system is made up of a composite, high-strain skin structure. Think of it as a super flexible and durable skin that wraps around an internal electromagnetic actuation system. This is the heart of the ACAS, controlling the movements of the missile. Now here's where it gets really interesting. The missile has a single articulated joint. This is like the elbow or knee of the missile, allowing it to change direction. The forebody of the missile, that's the front part, is used as a flight control surface. It's like the wings of a bird, helping to steer the missile in flight. 
And the result? This design significantly boosts the effectiveness of air-to-air axisymmetric missiles. Now, the Air Force Research Laboratory has been hard at work for six whole years investing in research, and their dedication paid off. They now have a thorough understanding of the design, construction, integration, and use of the articulation control actuation system. This isn't just any system. It's impossible to improve missile performance without the ACAS. Now, there are several ideas floating around about how to make missiles bendy, but not all of them fly when it comes to the super fast world of supersonic missiles. But there's one approach that's got everyone buzzing. It involves spinning segments that fit together at weird angles. Imagine the nozzle on an F-35 fighter jet, the one that lets it land straight up and down. Yeah, kind of like that, but for a missile. An electronically controlled actuation technology consisting of frameworks, bearings, gears, and small electromagnetic motors was created by AFRL. A circular pass-through for component wiring into the airplane body is made possible by careful design. The actuation components are shielded in super strong, lightweight skin to protect it. This missile's maneuverability was mentioned earlier, however. How does this happen? Originally, the flexible outer layer was to be made of a single type of material, similar to an advanced rubber band. However, engineering is all about making things operate flawlessly, and that particular material wasn't cutting it. Therefore, the composite structure was created by the project's geniuses. However, they didn't end with just one concept. They developed three different strategies for creating this composite, each with unique advantages. Now, Let's move on to the Hypersonic Air Breathing Weapon Concept Program. The program is a project from the United States Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or as we all know it, DARPA. This isn't just any project, it is a scramjet-powered hypersonic air-launched cruise missile project. They openly announced a successful hypersonic flight in September 2021. And here is the most interesting fact. It is not a regular missile, but a kinetic energy weapon. This missile cuts through the air like a superheated bullet at a speed that is faster than five times the speed of sound. It is powered by a ramjet engine, and the coolest part is that it doesn't even need an explosive warhead. The sheer force of impact at those hypersonic speeds is enough to take down its target. The HAWC accomplished its first successful test flight, which is a significant advancement. However, after that, things started to get somewhat interesting. Mid-March 2022 saw additional testing, but those were kept under wraps. Why? It seems that they didn't want to add to the already tense situation involving Russia and Ukraine. Very reasonable. The good news is that they eventually disclosed this additional test on April 2022, so there are no longer any surprises there. One interesting thing about the missile is that, in comparison to other hypersonic missiles, it is small. This gives it more advantage because it can launch from a large range of planes and other platforms, and it is also easier to equip with targeting devices, which adds to its versatility as a weapon. And it doesn't stop there. HAWC is comparable to a stepping stone toward progressively more sophisticated hypersonic technology. The people behind this project, DARPA, are already hard at work on the next big thing, which is dubbed MOHAWC and sounds incredibly futuristic. We are eager to find out what that one has planned. During its last set of test flights, it flew perfectly, speeding above the speed of sound at an astounding 3,300 miles per hour. And it managed to do it all while flying at a mind-blowing altitude of nearly 60,000 feet while covering 300 nautical miles. However, HAWC is still ongoing. In this most recent test, its overall performance greatly improved, making it an even more powerful computer. Lockheed Martin and DARPA, the people behind HAWC, are so enthusiastic about the concept that they are currently working on the next installment. The system uses an air-launched solid fuel rocket with a hypersonic section powered by a tactical boost glide engine. During flight, the missile climbs to 11 miles high, then releases a hypersonic arrow that hits the target with lightning speed from over 300 miles away. The missile was tested using the legendary B-52 bomber, meaning it can be used with older aircraft, enhancing the United States military's capabilities. The Air Force isn't the only branch with powerful weapons. Ground-based artillery aims to destroy enemies with maximum precision, speed, and range. 
For instance, the standard high Mars ammunition can hit targets up to 37 miles away, which isn't very far. This is where the MGM-140 missile, or ATACMIS, comes in. This massive 13-foot missile weighs 1.5 tons, as much as a car. Its warhead carries a large amount of explosive, and there's footage online showing its devastating power. One hit from the MGM-140 can completely destroy a target, and possibly more, as it can carry cluster munitions that cover a whole football field. The best part about the ATACMS is its 186-mile range. A HIMARS launcher with an MGM-140 could easily hit targets from the same distance as between New York and Washington, making this combo a formidable weapon. The U.S. military can attack enemies using its mobile M270 MLRS rocket launcher system. This American-made artillery can destroy targets anytime and in any weather, whether it's snow, rain, or wind. It fires high-speed rounds chosen for the battlefield situation. This system is powerful due to its amazing missiles. You've heard about the ATACMS, but there's also the AT-2 rocket. This top-secret missile works differently from other cluster munitions. Instead of scattering small shells, it drops 500 anti-tank mines, creating a nearly impassable obstacle. The M270 MLRS can perform this operation in just 60 seconds, then leave behind a nasty surprise. There's a similar German system, the Mars 2, which is a licensed copy of the M270 MLRS. It has become even more powerful with the addition of the TOW anti-tank missile. This system has self-guided combat elements that release small projectiles during flight. Each projectile finds its target and attacks from above, leaving no heavy machinery intact. The Mars 2's powerful attacks shake the ground and can also use a cluster warhead filled with anti-tank mines. It fires, destroys multiple targets, and moves on, demonstrating its devastating capability. The German Army's Mars 2 has finally been upgraded with a new European fire control system that lets it shoot guided rockets like the GMLRs. It can fire various rockets such as M31 GMLRs, M31A1, M32, AT2, and 110 mm rockets, but it does not use M26, M26A1, or M30 rockets to comply with the Convention on Cluster Munitions. The updated Mars 2 slash MLRSE with GMLRS can now accurately target individual points and is used like a sniper weapon for artillery. It can also engage targets from 15 kilometers to 70 kilometers away and has a 90 kilogram warhead for precise strikes on specific targets. The old hydraulic system for aiming has been replaced with something even better, an electric launch drive system by KMW, or Krauss Maffe Wegman. This system allows faster aiming and less maintenance. The vehicle also features a fully automatic fire extinguishing system that uses nitrogen to put out fires in the engine compartment. The system can monitor and also fight fires automatically for up to 24 hours after the launcher is turned off. Currently, this upgrade is only used in Germany and Italy. While the rockets mentioned earlier can destroy entire cities, they can't protect themselves. That's where air defense systems like the Iris T SLM come in. This is Germany's most advanced air defense system, capable of taking down aircraft, helicopters, drones, cruise missiles, ballistic missiles, and even satellites, with quite an impressive range of 17 miles. Unlike other systems that need cover and separate reconnaissance units, the IRIS is fully self-sufficient. It can take a position, track targets hundreds of miles away, and destroy them with a precise strike, providing 360-degree protection without moving. The latest IRIS T TSLM model has two radars. One operates stealthily without emitting radiation to stay hidden, while the other offers 3D tracking of over 180 targets up to 155 miles away. This data is sent to the operator's monitor, resembling a computer game. When an enemy appears, powerful guided Iris T missiles launch towards it. These missiles can hit targets up to 92,000 feet high, higher than modern fighter jets, and can also target low-flying satellites and drones. The Iris missile and its launch system can defend against anything in the sky. Thanks for watching. While you are still here, Click on the link on your screen to check out another of our videos. See you there.